This is 5 o'clock Shadow on the Pacific Radio Network, streaming live at stream.wbai.org. We are very happy to have with us live today nuclear expert, nuclear engineer, plant operator, and expert witness, Arnie Gunderson of Fair Winds Associates. And uh, today we're going to do a roundup of some of the clear and present dangers of nuclear facilities in the United States of America. We'll also have a roundup of what is happening with the doomed nuclear plant complex in Japan known as Fukushima. Welcome back, Arnie. Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me. And I'd like to congratulate you on your recent trip and tour and press uh, conference in Japan with the release of your new book on the real dangers of Fukushima. How did, how did that go? Um, well, the, the, the tour was terrific. Um, I mean, it was, um, the Japanese are such, such wonderful, wonderful people. Um, there's, um, uh, it started with a two, two hour presentation at the Japanese press club and, and, uh, I did get to visit a nuclear plant, not, not Fukushima, but, uh, Hamoka, which is, um, was, um, I'll tell you, the visitor center was gorgeous. They, <laughs> um, they had to spend a hundred million dollars on their visitor center to promote nuclear power. Well, um, that is not the only place where there are the dangers of cracked containments, the dangers of inadvertent release of radioactive materials, mm -hmm. and uh, insufficient planning for various emergencies that may occur. And we've not had as much of a chance to speak about the domestic dangers. And uh, around this time, nearly a year ago, we were speaking about Fort Calhoun in Omaha and the risks that that plant posed in the face of what last year was a record level of flooding, and the plant almost got uh, flooded, and in fact there was seepage of water into the basement. But uh, apparently that is not the only problem with uh, the facilities in Nebraska. Among the problems that we are aware of is that there has been a failure or an incomplete uh, uh, maintenance or uh, upkeep of the siren and warning facilities and other dangers, but that may be the least of it. What is the latest you know about uh, Nebraska, Arnie? Um, yeah, it's a long litany. Um, yes, we were on about a year ago talking about the floods, and um, um, well, let's give the NRC one pat on the back before we, uh, we, we lower our aim a little lower. But uh, they did, uh, uh, back in '09. they did force Fort Calhoun to... Uh, do some flood enhancements. Had they not done that, they, uh, the plant uh, likely would have um, would have melted down. So I think the uh, the NRC um, was proactive in, in forcing Fort Calhoun to do some work back in '09. Uh, okay, so now let's aim a little lower. The um, uh, while we were uh, while the plant was flooded, uh, they there there were leaks through penetrations um, which we were unaware of last year. It had to be, but. Uh, the basement areas were getting uh, taking in water, uh, but I, I think you recall we had a long discussion about the fire. They had a fire that knocked out the uh, spent fuel pool cooling for 90 90 minutes. Um, just this week they got a red finding, and um, that's as bad as it gets, uh, short of shutting a plant down, um, and uh, as a result of the the, the fire. Um, by the way, the NRC has only shut one plant down in 30 years, and that was because the resident inspector walked in and found the five operators asleep in the control room at the same time. So I don't think Fort Calhoun's going get, to get shut down for a mere fire. They, um, uh, but, but in addition to the fire knocking out the spent fuel pool cooling, the NRC determined that had there been an accident going on, it would have knocked out the accident cooling as well. Um, and, and that's just part of this big puzzle. That's, the red finding was specifically aimed at that. But now Fort Calhoun's been down for more than a year, and it's, um, uh, it's got management problems, severe management problems that uh, um, have not been identified by the NRC over the last year or two, and it's not been identified by uh, INPO, which is the Institute for Nuclear Preparedness, the, uh, um, the, the industry's watchdog group. So, you know, the, the question is, how could it get this bad with all that oversight? You know, we've got NRC inspectors, we've got INPO inspectors, we've got people in the plant, and it looks like they'll be um, down for at least 18 months when they shake out their management problems, the fire. Um, God, there's a, there's a litany of problems there, in addition to the fact that the plant flooded and the foundations got soggy. Arnie Gunderson, 
One of the characteristics of nuclear plants is that they need millions and millions of gallons of water per day in order to maintain cooling. And the cooling mechanism of the uh, Fort Calhoun and the other plant in Nebraska, they're on the Missouri River. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us what parameters there are of possible radiation release into the river? Well, we talked about that last year, and I kept saying, forget the containment, forget the big building. Look at that little, the little building on the water, which was completely surrounded by, uh, by water. <clears throat> and it's interesting, in the last year, the NRC has finally recognized that um, uh, that that is likely the single biggest weakness in any nuclear plant. And that's the intake structure, and within the intake structure is something called the service water pumps. And they're the thing that, that actually cool the diesels and they cool the nuclear core. Um, and they're sitting right on the water with no protection whatsoever. So um, the, we, we call it the loss of the ultimate heat sink. And the emphasis is on ultimate. This, um, uh, if you lose it, there is no alternative. Um, we had an example last summer where a, um, a Norwegian sailboat sailed into Boston Harbor. Its motor failed and the crew saw these lights on the horizon. It was at night. And they, they floated over and dropped anchor. And in the morning, when the sun came up, they, uh, they realized they were 30 feet away from the intake structure at the Pilgrim nuclear plant. And um, the guards realized that, oh, my God, we've got this huge boat 30 feet away from our intake structure. If instead of law-abiding Norwegians, we had had um, you know, Tim McVeigh in that sailboat, um, we likely would have had a loss of the ultimate heat sink. You could, these, uh, because those structures, whether through an act of terror, or an act of God, are the, um, the most vulnerable part of a nuclear plant. The operation of a nuclear power plant is so dependent on the cooling and the emergency core cooling system and the spent fuel storage cooling system. It's almost like a blowtorch with the batteries not included for the safety system because of the uh, possibility of the failure. A nuclear plant actually has to subscribe to electricity from somewhere else or depend on emergency generators. Can you tell us how that vulnerability touches all nuclear power plants, not to mention the possibility of solar storm outages. Well, there's a, a euphemism in the nuclear industry that there's been a safe shutdown. And uh, routinely when a plant shuts down, you'll hear the NRC that say that the, the plant is safely shut down. Um, what that means is the control rods fall in and the chain reaction stops. But that doesn't mean that the heat stops. And, and that's where the, the, and the eye, there's the rub. Um, the, um, because the chain reaction has gone on, now instead of a uranium al uh, atom, you've got pieces that are also radioactive. And as they decay away, they give off a lot of heat. Well, at the beginning, almost 8%, and then gradually over time down to 1% and, and, and less. But they have to be cooled even after the chain reaction stops. And, of course, that's what happened at, at, um, at uh, Fukushima, it was that um, uh, even though the, the reactor scrammed, uh, we're, we're certain that the control rods fell in, um, they still had to be cooled externally. And they have to be cooled for years, um, at least four or five years before you, have to, before you can basically assume that they can be cooled in air. So, um, yeah, the, the euphemism of a safe shutdown just means that 95% of the heat is, is dissipated. But, you know, let's look at a plant like um, Indian Point which has more than uh, about 3.5 million horsepower inside this little contain containment. Well, 5% of that is still an awful lot of horses. You know, it's, I'm doing quick math in my head here, but, you know, 200,000 horses inside that little building that have to be cooled. Um, and uh, that's where the weakness is, is removing that heat for an extended period of time, not just an hour or two, but for, for days and years. There are other nuclear problems across the United States. And for our listeners with uh, locations or contacts in California, there's uh, yet another kind of problem involving the heat exchange from the hot water of the nuclear reaction and its uh, uh, downshifting into steam for the turning of the turbines. And I understand that that is a problem at San Onofre. What do you know about that? Um, yeah, the the uh, San Onofre plants are um, started up in uh, 83 and 84, 
And over time, the heat exchangers uh, called called steam generators um, began to break, and that's that has become uh, sort of the rule in this industry. Um, Almost like, you know, eventually when you drive your car long enough, you've got to replace the, the radiator. Um, it's the same thing in the nuclear plant. You've got to replace these steam generators. Well, Southern California Edison's uh, management decided that they weren't just going to replace these steam generators, but that they were going to make them with more tubes inside, and they were going to, and that forced a whole series of design modifications. So they put these new hyped, uh, supercharged um, steam generators in, uh, two years ago, and um, and they failed. Um, just in January, one actually blew some tubes, and uh, the other one, when they went in to look, had tubes that were 30% worn already. And the plant's only this this piece, this component, is only two years old. So um, the plant's down has been down since January, and likely will be down at least part of the summer. Um, because nobody can figure out how this happened, and once you find out how it happened, nobody can figure out how to prevent it from uh, from getting any worse uh, moving into the future. You know, that's a that's a very crowded plant site. For anybody who's ever been there, it's only a couple hundred feet wide, and it's right on the Pacific on one side, and Route 5 runs right, I-5 runs right down from San Diego up to L.A., right on the other side of the plant. And Within um, it's it's second only to Indian Point as far as population density. Um, you know, there's a couple of this um, eight million people within 26 miles of Indian Point, and there's about eight million within 50 miles of um, of San Onofre. So, if one of these pipes were to burst um, and uh, and cascade, it's something we call a steam generator tube ruptures. Um, it could, you know, shut down I-5 and cause uh, evacuation. So it's important to get it right. It's important to take your time and figure out what the heck caused these tubes to break so so prematurely. In um, many cases, malfunctions in the steam generators are referred to by the industry as the non-nuclear part <laughs> of the power plant. Is that an accurate characterization? Well, it's the, it's the divider between the nuclear part and the non-nuclear part. So, you know, like when the, uh, the, the tube that failed um, just began to leak, uh, and the leak was significant enough that they picked it up on their radiation monitors and shut the plant down. <clears throat> Had they not picked it up, the tube would have literally been cut by the, by the pinhole because the water pressure is uh, over 1,000 pounds per square inch, and it doesn't take long before a, a little hole gets real big real fast. So what happens in, 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 in these heat exchangers is that the radioactive water is supposed to be on one side and the clean water is supposed to be on the other. So this failure allows the containment to be breached. It allows the radioactive material to cross out of the containment, and it can't be isolated, uh, which, is, which is 